In this video, I am going to show you how to create this uh, beautiful and uh, smooth animation in Figma and import that directly to your Android application. Okay, so the first uh, step is to actually create that animation in uh, Figma. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, Figma is a uh, UI uh, UX uh, software that is available for free. Also, if you want to completely master this uh, software, then I highly suggest you to check out uh, one of my uh, online courses uh, for that purpose. Uh, anyhow, here we are going to start by creating uh, one simple frame. So let's here press uh, A shortcut. Let's hold down uh, Shift and let's create here a simple frame. I'm going to specify here the size to be a uh, 512 uh, in a width and a height. We can also just name this, for example, number one. And we are going to actually create uh, multiple different frames and convert our design into a uh, prototype. Okay. So the first uh, thing inside this uh, frame, I want to create uh, one uh, circle. So let's press O uh, key on our uh, keyboard. Let's hold down uh, Alt uh, plus Shift to create one a perfect uh, circle uh, circle from the center. Let's specify here its uh, size to be 350, for example. So something like that. Let's uh, just uh, center that on the screen. There we go. And now I'm going to press this little um, circle uh, icon here to create actually an arc out of this uh, circle, okay? And now I'm going to here specify actually a swap angle to be uh, zero for now. And this, um, this uh, third uh, ratio will be, for example, a 90%. Let's just increase here a little bit so you, that you can see how will that actually look like. So uh, this uh, second field uh, does represent a sweep angle, which will allow us to basically increase that uh, angle uh, by ourselves. So from uh, 0 to 100. Here we have also this uh, start um, a position that we can change, actually. Let me just here show you. So we can change here the start position of this uh, sweep angle as well. So that's how it works. For now, I'm going to specify that to be a zero. This um, a ratio will be a nine, uh, uh, ninety percent. We can of course increase or decrease that by ourselves. So it's up to you. Uh, in this case, I'm going to leave that to a ninety percent. And this uh, first um, first uh, frame uh, will contain uh, this uh, sweep angle of a zero. So by default, it will be basically uh, hidden. Okay. Now let's duplicate this uh, frame. So let's just select this frame, press uh, Control D to duplicate that one. Okay. And here in this uh, second one, let's just select this uh, same ellipse. And now I'm going to increase uh, its actual sweep angle to uh, 80%. Okay. So that will be our uh, second uh, frame that we're going to create. And also I want to create here um, one uh, check mark icon. So for that purpose, I'm going to use here a, a pen tool. So select the P on your keyboard or just uh, select uh, from this option as well. And here let's create here a simple uh, icon. So I'm going to here uh, create uh, first a path, for example, right there. I'm going to now hold down a shift to, uh, to uh, use a 45 degree angle and then I'm going to create one more, and the third one, I'm also holding down the shift uh, as well to uh, to use the 45 degree um, angle. And here I'm going to create uh, the third one, for example, uh, right there. Uh, press uh, V uh, to select the select tool. Now let's increase its actual um, border width, for example, to maybe let's say 14. 14, okay. Let's now try to move that uh, somewhere here on the center of this uh, actual ellipse something like that there you go we can now uh, choose the same color as the color of this um, uh, circle behind there you go and uh, in this uh, second uh, frame and the check mark will actually be hidden so let's uh, specify its uh, its uh, opacity here to be a uh, zero so type zero and press enter there you go and let's duplicate now this uh, second uh, frame uh, to the third frame and now in this uh, third frame I'm going to change here the opacity to uh, 100% this time and also I'm going to apply here a color to both of those paths. So let's select both of them holding down the shift and let's change here the fill color uh, to this uh, green one and here as well for the stroke. There we go. You can of course uh, play around uh, and maybe even increase or decrease the actual uh, border width of this um, a checkmark icon, so it's up to you. Uh, anyhow, uh, this animation will actually have uh, three different uh, uh, frames, and uh, each uh, frame will uh, basically uh, animate and transition to the next one. So, for example, this first one will uh, smartly animate to this uh, second one, this uh, second one to the third one. So, 
let me just show you how will that actually uh, look like here in our um, uh, Figma project. So uh, I'm going to choose now prototype section here. Let's select this first frame. And now you will see those little uh, handlers uh, that you can actually drag uh, from each frame. So let's just connect this first one with a second one. Uh, for the animation details here, I'm going to choose uh, after delay of uh, one second. So uh, the animation will basically uh, transition immediately from this first to the second one. So after delay of one milliseconds, we want to uh, smartly animate to the second frame, okay? And that uh, animation will last, for example, uh, 500 milliseconds. Okay, and then this uh, second one should be connected with the third one. Also choose here after a delay of a once, one millisecond. So basically immediately after this animation finishes, we are uh, starting this uh, third frame. And we also want to use this uh, same... Um, uh, animation details like the smart animate and the 500 milliseconds okay and the last uh, thing now we can uh, see that this uh, flow has been uh, automatically created we can also rename that to say for example animation and now we can try to start this uh, animation or this uh, prototype to see how will that actually look like so let's just wait until this uh, prototype actually opens up uh, okay so we can now press uh, R on our keyboard to actually reset this animation. So as you can see, this uh, smart animate feature uh, does not actually animate uh, our uh, design here uh, the way we actually wanted. But don't worry, uh, we are going to manually uh, do the animation uh, with uh, one uh, plugin. So let's first uh, select all those uh, three uh, frames. Let's go to the uh, plugin section here and type here uh, ANINIX, so that's the plugin name that we're going to use. And here we have an, uh, two options, to go to the editor or to export this uh, prototype. We can just press, for example, uh, export uh, prototype. And now let's just wait until this um, plugin is uh, getting things ready. Click export. And now a new page will appear in your browser. So from here, you can also see that we can actually uh, play this animation to see how will that actually look like. Okay, so as you can see, that's how it looks like for now, but don't worry, uh, we are going to modify this um, uh, animation to fit our needs. So for that purpose, let's go to the editor of this uh, uh, plugin, and we are going to manually uh, create uh, and modify this animation. So in this uh, design panel right here, we can see our frame and those elements that we actually have. So we have one vector that represents a uh, check mark, right? And we have that ellipse around it. So uh, with this um, first check mark, we are uh, animating the fill color and the stroke color. So in this case, we actually don't need the fill color uh, for our uh, check mark. So it's uh, wrongly added to this uh, project. So we can just remove that. Um, so this is where that fill actually is. So a fill color uh, just in that same row and click delete. Okay, and now we can also preview this animation and see how will that actually look like. We can now select this uh, vector and actually remove this uh, fill color. Okay. And now as you can see, that, that's how it will actually uh, work. So our animation will work something like that. So basically, we are increasing this uh, sweep angle uh, for our ellipse. As you can see here, it says the, the sweep angle. And by default, that sweep angle will be zero. And after 500 milliseconds, that sweep angle will increase to uh, 80%. And that uh, sweep angle will also uh, maintain its value until this uh, animation ends. Okay, so let me just see how will that actually look like. We can also select uh, each and every uh, property that we are animating here and change its duration, for example, or even the value curve. For example, we can choose here maybe uh, Apple standard for each and every um, animation here. Or you can experiment with that by yourself, so it's up to you. Okay, let me just preview that once again to see how will that actually look like. Uh, okay, so this uh, check mark is actually animating its opacity right here. I'm going to uh, select that opacity, so there it is. And I'm going to increase that opacity uh, and actually move that uh, right there. Okay. So we are basically animating this opacity uh, not from the 0, but from the 0 0.5. Okay. And now, as you can see, the, the sweep angle will animate until we reach 0 0.5 seconds. And only after that, uh, we're going to start animating uh, this actual um, uh, check mark icon along with this opacity value, color, and the color of this uh, sweep angle as well. Okay? 
So now let's uh, start over and click play button so we can uh, see how this animation will now work. Okay. All right, so it works actually uh, just great. There is uh, also one more thing that we can add here. So for example, we can uh, also add a, a scale animation for this uh, check mark. So uh, to do that, first I'm going to here uh, actually remember the, the size of this uh, check mark. So uh, 212 by 153. So I'm going to now uh, specify here a uh, zero to be the width and height of this um, check mark. I'm going to add here um, the keyframe on the 0 0.5 uh, timeline. And then on the end of this timeline, I'm going to specify that the same uh, width and height that we have just removed. So 212, right? There you go. And with this, we have basically now uh, animating uh, the scale or the size of this uh, check mark as well from 0 0.5 to 1. Uh, to one on our timeline, okay? Now there is one more thing that we need to uh, modify here also, is this a pivot point. So as you can see, our check mark is actually not animating from the center, so uh, it's not the way I actually expected. Of course, you can animate this uh, scale uh, from the top left corner, as you can see in this case, so that's how it will uh, work. Uh, but if you want to change uh, this, um, this uh, pivot point, you can do that very easily uh, by just selecting this uh, this uh, check mark and moving that uh, pivot point on the center. Okay, and now this is what kind of uh, effect we are going to get. And there you go. So that's how easily uh, it is to actually animate uh, uh, those uh, designs that you actually create with uh, Figma. And now that we have finally created this uh, animation and it's a uh, final form, and now we can export this animation as a uh, JSON or as um, a Loti animation. So let's just here specify a Loti uh, extension and click uh, export. So now as you can see, we have received one file uh, that has a JSON extension and we are going to use that uh, same file to import into Android Studio as a Loti animation. Okay, so this is the demo project that I have prepared for the demonstration purposes. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, only one uh, composable function a main screen. And this screen contains a simple column and the two uh, composable functions. The first one is the Loti animation and the second one is a button, which uh, we are going to use to restart our animation. On the top of our uh, composable function, we have uh, one composition variable that uh, basically points to our uh, actual uh, Loti animation file. In this case, this is the file that I have just uh, exported from the website. And also I have changed its uh, name to be the animation because uh, number one cannot be used as a name for this uh, file. Anyhow, after you place this animation JSON file in this uh, row directory, you can just uh, call this uh, a row resource and specify that same animation. And now finally let's launch this application to see how our animation uh, will actually look like. So we can press play again button to see how this animation uh, will look like. And there we go. So it does look uh, quite nice and uh, it's uh, basically the same as the one that we have created in Figma. Okay, so that's how you can easily create a quite beautiful and a smooth animation with Figma and import that same animation in Android Studio. So if you have any questions about this animation and the process of uh, implementing this animation, feel free to comment down below. And of course, uh, be sure to like this video, but only if you find it helpful. For this video, that'll be all.